seated. I would like to uh, open this special session of the Doctor Committee of Nanjing One, and I would like to ask our candidate to take his position behind the theater. Before we start, um, I would like to thank our external experts of this doctor, doctor committee for their contribution. And in particular, I would like to thank Professor Leonard from the RWTH in Aachen, welcome. And Dr. Den Brinker from Philips Research. So we're going to start this defense with the question from the first promoter, and in this case, that's Professor De Haan. Well, Mr. Director, after uh, from Vendors, I would like to ask you to uh, summarize your work first and present your main conclusions. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my doctorate defense ceremony. Today, I'm going to defend my PhD thesis entitled "Robust and Automatic Remote Photoplethysmography." Healthcare monitoring is very important to human lives because it can indicate our body conditions like heart rate, respiration rate, and blood oxygen level. However, the conventional contact-based monitoring that requires sensors attaching to the skin uh, have se several limitations. They are very irritating to the fragile uh, skins, like uh, neonates, and they are cumbersome and uncomfortable to use, and they have uh, not robust to body motions. To solve these limitations, we can use a remote camera to replace a contact-based optical sensor like PPG. So here we call it a remote PPG. A basic remote PPG setup has three components. The light source, the human skin, and the camera. The principle is very similar to the PPG. So when the positive blood is propagating in the cardiovascular system, it will change the amount of hemoglobins and thus cause variations of the optical absorption and scattering properties across the light spectrum. So by using a camera to measure the light reflected from the skin, we can get color signals that can turn the blood volume changes over time. So this is the visualization how we extract the pulse signal from the camera. The input are the video frames. First, we detect the skin. Then, from the skin pixels, we extract color signals. From the color signals, we extract one-dimensional pulse signal. Translating this uh, workflow into the algorithmic steps, we propose an end-to-end -end monitoring system. In the following presentation, I will present this system step by step. The first step is skin detection. For this step, uh, we propose to do a living skin detection that only detects the pixels that contain the pulse signals as skin. In this way, the doll face, even if it has the skin uh, similar visual appearance, will not be detected. How to do skin, living skin detection? If we plot two signals from the skin area of a single subject, that you can see they are very similar to each other because the human has only one cardiovascular system. But if we plot two signals from the background, you can see they are not similar to each other because they are random noise from the background. So we can use a similarity matrix to interpret this type of relationship where skin pixels show similar signals are correlated. By factoring rise this similarity matrix, we can separate skin and non-skin. However, this step is time-consuming because it requires online similarity learning. So we propose a second method uh, to uh, solve this problem. Still, if we look at uh, the pulse signal from the skin and the non-signal from the non-skin, we found that if we do a multi-resolution iterative transformation on the frequency spectrum, we can get the pulse descriptor and the noise descriptor that show the contrast patterns. This implies that we can treat the detection as a classification program, that we train an offline classifier using the existing data, where pulse descriptor is in the positive class, where noise descriptor is in the negative class. Then we apply the trained classifier for online detection to label the pixels as skin or non-skin. In this way, we move the time-consuming machine learning step to an offline stage. But all the detected skin areas need to be tracked over time. If the tracker fails, the measurement will still be successful. So we propose a third option we call full video pulse extraction. And uh, this method eliminates the skin detection and the tracking. 
in that specific application scenario, we find that the video objects are quite stable over time. The pillow, the bed, and the clothes, they do not change colors by themselves. The subject may move a bit or change the position during the measurement. As far as this is still in front of the video, uh, and then the DC color distribution of the video object will be stable over time. So we can use this property to create a set of weighting masks for the parallel pulse extraction and selection. In this way, we can ensure that skin has been always measured in one of the weighting masks and that we do not need to worry about the tracking drift. So the essence of this approach is that we no longer use a single mask for single spot measurement, but we use multiple masks for the parallel measurement. After getting the single parallel weighting masks, we can get the color signals from them. And then, in this step, we will remove the color uh, distortions from these signals. By performing a large scale experiment on many faces, we find that the positive distribution have very unique signature. The first uh, property is that they have a small amplitude in color channels. It is understandable because ours is a vital sign, especially in the R channel. Second, they have a very unique order in the distribution of RGB channels. For example, the green channel has the maximum possibility, then the blue channel, then the red channel. So we can use these property, two properties as the signature to identify the color distortions in the signals. So give the input RGB signal and it's transformed the frequency spectrum. For each individual frequency component, we can do two checks. First, we check its amplitude to see whether it's larger than a threshold. Or we can check its color variation direction across three channels to see whether it meets our signature, this order. By this, each of these two ways, we can identify those distortions and suppress them, and then output the clean RGB signals. After this step, we can do the pulse extraction. That extract one dimensional pulse signal from multi-dimensional color signals. For this step, we propose a method called pulse, which extracts the pulse signal on a plane or fog node to the skin tone direction. By projecting RGB signals onto the uh, pulse plane, we first eliminate the intensity variation. Furthermore, we find that on this plan, some directions give very clean signals, while other directions give quite noisy signals. The reason is that we found that uh, the specular and the positive components have different distribution directions. Therefore, we propose to, to, uh, to, uh, propose to uh, two projection axes that bound the maximum positive area, and then find an uh, optimal direction in between for the final pulse extraction. So essentially, the pulse has two steps. First, combining the 3D signals to 2D signals on a plane, then combining 2D signals into a 1D signal on a direction. After all these three steps, we basically have a pulse signal. But in the end, we still propose a global optimization step to further improve extraction robustness. The first optimization strategy we use is the multi-site measurement of camera. So giving, uh, for example, giving uh, a talking subject that more motions on the fo uh, around the mouth area than the forehead area. So it is logical that we first separate the whole face into the local areas for the independent measurement. Because then we can see which local sensors are distorted by motion and which sensors are clean. By doing a sensor pruning, we can remove those noisy sensors and only use the clean sensors for the pulse measurement. However, this method requires accurate uh, local motion tracking, which is less feasible for the use cases with heavy motions like fitness. In fitness, everything becomes very challenging because we have those repetitive body motions we do in the sports exercise that will introduce the periodic and significant distortions in the color spectrum, and they may even appear in the heart rate band. To suppress these multiple motion distortions, we propose a subband method which decomposes the color spectrum into the independent frequency band. And for each band, we perform an independent pulse extraction. In this way, each frequency band has its own degrees of freedom to suppress distortions, and therefore, multiple distortions can be suppressed simultaneously. 
In the end, our system will output a pulse signal, and we can use this pulse signal for many applications that improve the human lives. For example, we can use it for the continuous vital signs monitoring in ICU, in nuclear, or even the uh, triage in the emergency department. We can also use this for the well-being management or lifestyle applications like automotive, fitness cardio training, or even for the security purpose like face <coughs> and spoofing. So the conclusions of this thesis work is that we increase the understanding of remote PPG, we significantly improve its robustness, and we demonstrate the feasibility of using it to automate the monitoring. The four years PhD works lead to 11 journal publications, four conference papers, and eight patent applications. Thank you. <laughs>